Before this video starts, if you enjoy this video, there are many more like it already on the channel with many more like it to come in the future, so subscribe. I am trying to hit 125,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I would really appreciate it. I upload daily on this channel, so if you're looking for some consistent basketball talk, this is a place for it. Also, drop a like on this video. It only takes one second. It makes a massive difference. Game 5 was the best game of this finals, the bubble, and probably the best finals game since 2016. It was a close battle the whole way through. Now, throughout the game, it did feel like the Lakers would eventually pull away. However, they did not. The Heat refused to pull any punches and ended up coming out on top. However, the Lakers did have a chance to win this game late and, in turn, close out the series. LeBron has the ball, drives inside the paint. A whole lot of help comes. He kicks it out to Danny Green, who shot his shot like I do mine, which is to say that he missed horribly. That's a dating metaphor. My jump shot is wet. This led to a whole lot of thoughts right out of the gate here was my initial reaction they gave it to danny green danny green they gave it to danny green really i do want to say i applaud danny green for his level of not giving a fuck because not only does this man have a twitter account that he is active on he has his dms open I admire that level of not caring, I'll never reach it. But on top of that reaction of, wow, Danny Green bad, the next thing came that was to be expected, which was the question of, should LeBron have passed it there? Should LeBron have forced up a shot, maybe went for a floater, or tried to draw a foul, or was he right to kick it out to a 26% three-point shooter for this series? Well, this question I feel is an interesting one, and it's at least somewhat fair if asked in good faith. Even though this question is using a fair amount of hindsight, it's hard to find any level of what if in sports or anything that isn't employing quite a bit of hindsight. That's just the nature of a what if. It's a fair question to ask. In my opinion, under the circumstances, LeBron made the right call. However, there should have been a better play drawn up for the Lakers. Because Miami was very clearly ready for this play and perfectly content giving Green that shot. They played right into what they wanted them to do, and I think that criticism lies on Frank Vogel, not LeBron James. But it's a fair question to ask, as I said, in good faith. However, there are a handful of people, mainly LeBron James haters who said that he made a mistake and furthermore made the case that we've heard a million times now that LeBron James is afraid of the moment. This is nothing new. I've seen it happen a million times at this point. In the clutch, especially in big games, playoffs or otherwise, the defense collapses on LeBron James to some extent or another. They leave a man open. LeBron passes it to that man and he misses. And then right after that on Twitter and on daytime talk shows like First Take or whatever bullshit program Skip Bayless is on now, say that LeBron choked, he passed up the shot because he doesn't have a clutch gene like Michael Jordan. And because of that, he's not the GOAT. Now, if you know me, you would know that I agree. I don't believe LeBron James is the GOAT. I do think it is Michael Jordan. But that doesn't mean that that argument isn't stupid as shit and also incredibly hypocritical. And on top of that, it's also based entirely on a horrible idea of what Clutch actually is. So first of all, let's focus on the actual circumstances revolving around the GOAT debate in terms of this discussion. In this case, we are only focusing on MJ and LeBron because A, that's the main argument here, and B, both of those guys are the top two players of all time, and there is a notable gap between them and number three. So the reason this is hypocritical is because Michael Jordan has famously passed the ball in the clutch in the NBA Finals twice to John Paxson in 1993 versus the Phoenix Suns, and to Steve Kerr in 1997. Did I say 1997 twice? To John Paxson in the 1993 finals against the Suns, and to Steve Kerr in the 1997 finals versus the Jazz. Let's take a look at the biggest LeBron hater, or sorry, the guy who is paid to pretend to be the biggest LeBron hater, Skip Bayless. How does he feel about LeBron passing it to Danny Green in the clutch? Well, predictably, he wasn't a fan. Also, weirdly, he said that this game was a top three playoff performance in LeBron's career, which no, no, it wasn't. It's not even top five. It was an amazing performance, but LeBron is just ridiculous. But, well, okay, let's see. How does he feel about MJ doing the same thing? Well, to him, I guess MJ empowered those guys to 
make those shots and it only worked because he made his teammates so much better. Basically, when MJ does it, he was right to do it and it's an example of why he's the GOAT. And when LeBron does it, he wasn't right to do it and it's an example of why he isn't the GOAT. Hence me saying it's hypocritical. The only difference between LeBron passing it to Kerr or passing it to Paxson and LeBron passing it to Danny Green is that John Paxson and Steve Kerr were not bricklaying machines. Now, what I imagine Skip's rebuttal to this would be is that Jordan passed to those guys because he chose to, LeBron did it because he can't hit a clutch shot. But time and time and time and time and time again, LeBron James has proven that to just simply not be true. I'm not even going to bother listing out all the stats about why LeBron is one of the clutchest, if not the clutchest players of all time, because it's just so exhausting and I've done it a million times before. I have a video on the myth that LeBron isn't clutch because that's what it is, a myth. In fact, I think it's the most egregious myth in the history of the NBA. It's a false narrative that Skip Bayless loves to perpetuate more than anyone. The guy is statistically speaking clutcher than both MJ and Kobe, making him the clutchest player of all time in my opinion. LeBron made the right play, as he pretty much does every time this moment comes. And unfortunately in his case, there's just a lot of players on his team who ended up breaking the shot when he got them a good look. That's good basketball, it just didn't work out. The only difference, again, is that the shot didn't go in. But now let's talk about the biggest reason why this argument is so stupid. We have the fact that LeBron is statistically clutcher than Jordan, the hypocrisy of criticizing for LeBron doing this while praising Jordan for passing to Kerr, but what's really the dumbest factor here is the notion that the only way to be clutch is to actually make the shots. That if you aren't shooting the ball yourself, then you aren't being clutch. If you pass up the ball, you are inherently backing away from the moment because it's not gonna be you that shoots the ball, so where's the pressure? In the mind of these people, because Jordan's version of clutch and Kobe Bryant's version of clutch was chucking up a contested mid-range jump shot, that means that that's the only way to be clutch. And those guys were clutch, but that's not the only way. And yeah, I would agree that hitting a game winner is the best way to be clutch. It's the biggest example of clutch. That's pretty blatant. However, to act like it is the end-all be-all is just plain ridiculous, and it leads to the perpetuation of the myth that LeBron is not clutch and afraid of the moment. Let's take Game 6 of the 2013 Finals. This was one of the clutchest games in LeBron's career, but it never gets recognized as such because LeBron isn't the one who put the exclamation point on that one. It was Ray Allen in the corner. But as I've made a point to say a million times by now, LeBron had 16 points on 70% shooting in that fourth quarter, leading the Heat on a comeback that gave Ray Allen the opportunity to hit that shot in the first place. But to the likes of Skip Bayless, that wasn't LeBron being clutch, it was Ray Allen being clutch. And namely, Ray Allen saving his legacy. Skip will find any excuse to say that, by the way. When they're talking about LeBron's rings, Skip will always say that LeBron has three, which would have been two without Ray Allen. Like, he always says that. Now yeah, in all likelihood, the Heat lose this game if not for Ray Allen hitting that very clutch shot, but also in all likelihood they don't win that game or even get any close without LeBron balling the fuck out in the fourth quarter. That's left out partially because it goes against the narrative and partially because to these people, the last shot is the only thing that matters. So having 16 points on 70% shooting in an elimination game to eventually lead your team back to winning a championship, that's not clutch. Look, no one loves a fadeaway mid-range jump shot for the game more than me. My favorite player of all time is Kobe Bryant. I love the mid-range game. It's very exciting. The more difficult the shot is, the more exciting it is. But that's not the only way to be clutch. Scoring, period, isn't the only way to be clutch. Blocking a shot out of nowhere in a close fourth quarter in game seven is clutch, just like hitting a three-pointer to seal it is. Scoring 16 on 70% shooting in the fourth quarter of an elimination game is clutch, just like stepping behind the line and hitting the game tying shot is clutch and come to think of it let me just say one more thing that i've felt for quite a while why is it that teams always run a kobe or jordan type play for the game like why is a contested shot in an isolation always the go-to play pretty much unanimously because often in the cases where it doesn't work, I feel like, why is that what you went for? Why didn't you run a play of any kind? Why is the last shot in every game by every team ever in isolation? Why is there never any kind of set? Why is the play not, hey, let's get a pass to this guy who's coming off of screens or we'll do a backdoor cut? I feel dumbing down your offense for the last play of the game can be extremely consequential. Like, this defense that you're going against is going to be more locked in than they were any other possession because it's the final possession possession of the game. So why are you making your offense so simplistic that it's easy for them to read already very locked in? 
LeBron is clutch, he's not afraid of the moment, and he made the right basketball play. MJ is still my GOAT. LeBron does not have to be not clutch for me to feel that way, and Skip Bayless doesn't need to say that shit for LeBron to not be the GOAT. But the guy makes millions finding any and every way to hate on LeBron, so it's not like anything's going to change. I just feel like, why the fuck are people still giving him money? Obviously not directly, but you know what I mean. Anyways, I'll make sure my next LeBron video is me hating on him just to make sure I maintain the quota. Uh, and speaking of giving people money, uh, I have a Patreon. So if you want to support my content outside of just your like and subscription and get some extra content, go support me over there. It is much appreciated. If not, if you can just like and subscribe, that means the world too, because that is the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for my NBA content like this. Ugh, fuck, fuck. That is the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for my NBA content like this and cue the outro music.